Let's talk about Barbie. I'm going there. This is going to be, this is going to be so uncomfortable for me to talk about. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm out of my comfort zone right now, right then and there. I actually um, procrastinated in making this episode because I just don't want to talk about it. I don't, here's the thing. I went to go watch the movie because I wanted to see what people were seeing. And also because I really wanted to commentate on it. Like it's just, I like to see what is going on in pop culture and then just, I guess, seeing it. And then seeing it with regards to my identity, with like who I am, and then seeing it with regards to society as a whole. It's just something so interesting. You know, and Barbie was one of those things. Oppenheimer though, was definitely not. It was just like, boom, and everyone was like, (laughs) and then they all went home, you know? But Barbie was something else. Barbie was honestly, it gave me a headache just thinking about it, but I'll, I'll explain why it gave me a headache. Uh, Just a reminder, this is the Hippie Era podcast. I renamed it as Uncomfortable Truths, and I'm actually going to make the 12th episode about Uncomfortable Truths, ironically. But I renamed it because, well, my truths make a lot of people uncomfortable. Just look at the comments. Not the beginning comments. The beginning comments are always nice and really fun and just amazing, by the way. But then you go scroll a little further, and you'll be seeing a lot of people that are, well, uncomfortable. And that's kind of the point. Uncomfortable truths. There you have it. Also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Okay, let's get started. Barbie. <clears throat> Gosh. Okay, so going into this film, going into this film, I heard that it was going to be feminist propaganda. Like the entire movie in and of itself is just a feminist piece of propaganda. And if anyone knows me knows I'm not a feminist. I don't know why that's like a surprising thing. To this day, when I tell someone I'm not a feminist, they're like, what? I'm like, what? What? (laughs) It's just like so awkward and, well, uncomfortable, the name of this podcast. Uh, I'm not a feminist because, well, I'm a Muslim then and there. I'm just, I don't believe that feminism and Islam are compatible Uh, because you, well, you can make a whole freaking other video on why that is the case, but there's just so many conflictions between the two ideologies and feminism is an ideology it's not just like a movement it's something that people hold to their heart and they will like live by you know but there are so many things in feminism that are so contradicting with islamic fundamental principles that it's just it's hard for me to hear it literally it it hurts my heart when i hear a muslim girl say yeah i'm a feminist i'm a muslim feminist I'm like, okay, stay silent, Salah. You don't have to give your two cents on everything. You know, and I like hold myself every single time. Now, here's the thing about feminism. And here's where it gets so super complicated. Feminism means so many different things to so many people. Ask every person, what is feminism? You'll get a different answer almost every time. Which is why I hate discussing feminism is because you, you you could be talking you could be talking with a person you think you're touching on the same subject when you're in mars and they're in like uranus the planet there's no reason why i picked that planet i just felt um instinctive but it's just you're you're saying words but you the words that you're using and the other person is using they don't mean the same things to either of you you know so That's why when discussing feminism, it's just so, it's so messy. And it honestly gives me a headache because, well, well, first of all, feminists are very opinionated. Then and there, I just don't like that. (laughs) Well, no, it's not that I don't like that. It's just, it's tiring because it's like, you don't have to have an opinion on everything, by the way. There's a lot of things I don't have an opinion on. It's fine. It's just like... It is what it is. Why do I have to give my, why do I even have to have an opinion on it? You know, if it doesn't like, if it doesn't happen in my life and okay, well, when you put it like that, that just sounds so wrong. It's not like I only see what is going on in my life, but there are some things that are very, very irrelevant to me, you know, as a person, as who I am, 
So why do I need to have an opinion on it? It's just weird. Um, but yeah, that's just something about oh, feminist disclaimer. I'm not a feminist. Oh, I feel like ninety percent of people clicked out of this video already. Great. Now we can get started. Okay, so I got some notes ready because I really want this video to be productive. I don't want it to just go in like squiggly lines everywhere. So, okay, when I watched the movie, I went in thinking that it was feminist propaganda. And I saw all these like uh, creators commentary on what this film was and how it was and what it was to them. And, oh, I also saw Ben Shapiro's review, which was uh, it was hilarious. I'm sorry. It was the when he burned the Barbies, that was kind of funny to me. And I just apparently my sense of humor is just broken at this point. But he was very very angry. It was just like he was just like he was disgusted by the movie. I, and listen, I'm not a Ben Shapiro fan, but I like I love listening to his ideas because he does give some logical ideas. And I know he's Jewish and he was pro-Israeli. As it probably still is. And honestly. Just because someone believes in something that is completely opposite to what you believe in doesn't mean you completely disregard them as an individual. I like really hope that we get that settled. So I was listening to his review and he was so adamant that this was the worst movie he's ever seen in his life. So I was like, okay, I want to go see it for myself. You know, not to prove him wrong. It's like more so like I want to laugh at this. Like I want to see what he says then I want to watch the movie and like kind of spot spot what he said or, or just like see what was so funny and well when I did that I um I regret it I regret watching all of those commentary videos on Barbie and what Barbie was and how they perceived it because I truly think that it was like I could not watch Barbie without thinking about everything that everyone was saying Every scene that took place, all I was thinking about was like, what do people think of this? And then I literally, I got a notebook with me to the cinema with my friend. And there's this page that says Barbie commentary. Only has like two bullet points, but that's, I'll tell you why that is, okay? When I was watching this film and there were so many thoughts in my head that I like, I didn't know when to laugh, when to, it's, it's not like people were picking you know, my views for me. It's just, I was trying to see everything from all perspectives all the time. And the, the human brain is not supposed to do that. That's weird. And so after watching the movie, my friend was like, it's nice, I liked it. Kind of like along those lines. I was like, I, I don't know how to feel about the movie. I don't, I really don't. Like, There was so many parts to the movie that I don't, I don't even know what to touch on. And so after we watched the movie, we went to a coffee shop because I wanted to like write down my notes because they're juicy, they're fresh, they're right after the movie. So I wanted to write down everything that I thought. And I looked at my friend and I was like, I don't know what to think about the movie. It's so weird, you know? And it was weird, borderline bad. I didn't like, I didn't like the feeling that I had after the movie because of the confusion that I had. And she was like, just sleep on it. Just like, like you don't need to know everything all the time. Just sleep on it. And I was like, I guess. I guess I'll do that. And so she was right. I slept on it. I slept on it for two nights. Three nights, actually. And I was just still thinking about the movie. Because surface level. Oh, by the way, this is going to have spoilers. Because, well, you need to get into the specifics of the movie to talk about the movie surface level this movie is extremely dumb i'm sorry it's extremely dumb surface level surface level but then who is it directed by greta whatever her name is greta something <laughs> great great Get, greta gerwig i was gonna say greta thunberg or whatever that girl <laughs> oh the activist one right so greta gerwig okay it was directed by greta gerwig and she directed one of my favorite movies, which is Lady Bird, and a lot of people know that movie and resonate with it and love it. But that's because the way she has this ability to story tell to her audience is honestly on another level that only very, very few directors are on. 
Like, she has this gift that not many people have, and that is storytelling. You know, her way of communicating this idea, however complex it may be, but that you are left, after the movie's finished, you're left thinking about it for days because you felt so seen, and you felt like you were watching yourself the entire time. And so when I, when I, I knew it was directed by Greta, Thun, uh, Greta Gerwig, but it didn't really like hit me until I realized that she also directed Lady Bird. And, you know, I'm not, like, into directors and all of that, but it's, like, I really love that movie to the point where I did make note of the director. So I sat with myself thinking, this movie can't be done for no reason, respectfully. Like, it it felt so surface level, because remember, when I was watching this movie, so many thoughts were going through my head. I was about to have a seizure. And almost having a seizure in the cinema is not a fun experience. So... I was just left thinking, why would Greta do something so stupid when she is just much better than that? Like, it just felt like all of this money put into this movie that was marketed insanely, by the way, cannot be this dumb, cannot be this, like, flavorless, cannot be this, I don't know how to explain it, flat. It felt flat. You know, when I was watching the movie for for the scenes that I saw and everything, it just felt flat. But then three days in, and I'll be honest, I looked at some reviews, I looked at some commentary, because I, I felt like I missed something. I watched the movie, I came out of it, and I was so utterly confused. I felt like something was staring me in the face and I was just not looking at it. I don't know. That's how I felt. It felt like I didn't really get the message. Right? And, and I did keep in mind that this is like a feminist movie. Greta herself said that this is a feminist movie. So right then and there, of course, I'm just like wary of that movie. You know, like I wanted to, to see it because I want to see what people are saying. But, you know, I know that this is not aligned with my faith. This is not aligned with what I strongly, strongly identify as, which is Muslim. And I just sat with myself and I saw all of these reviews. I saw these commentaries. And one commentary that I absolutely loved, I like loved, is Michael Knowles' commentary on Barbie. And he talks about it from such an interesting perspective of the liberal arts perspective. And prior to that commentary, all the other reviews were just like seeing the movie on its surface level. You know, seeing the movie, seeing the scenes as they are. Surface level, completely surface level. Like there's just, there's no substance to the movie because like they didn't delve deep into what the meanings of the movie could be, of each scene, of each character. The, there's just so much going on, you don't even know where to look. So obviously after the movie, that's why I felt so confused is there was just so much going on. And then sleeping on it, sitting on it, just thinking about the movie for three days, I like realized things I did not think about dur during the movie, obviously. Because it's like when, when you're watching the movie, you can't connect things on the spot. You need to kind of create a mental map to understand where it, this movie's even trying to take you or where it's what it's trying to say. And something about Greta, I think, I'm, I don't know. Right, I didn't look into her videos much, like I didn't see all of her interviews, I saw just a couple. But I feel like she's this kind of artist that would create a piece of art and would want people to interpret it in their own way. And I feel like, in a sense, Barbie felt like that. But if, I'm telling you, it felt so dumb surface level. But there's so many ways you could dissect this movie. It's... It... It got me a headache. I'm not joking. I have a headache talking right now. But it's just like, I got a headache just thinking about all of these intricacies in the movie. Of course, there were some scenes and parts that were just like, you know, to me, I just didn't understand. And I don't want to understand. You know, so there's always going to be scenes in the movie that are just, in your eyes, unnecessary. To other people, probably the most necessary. You're always going to, like, differ with people, and that's fine. And that's what a movie is, is it's 
shown to this audience of completely different people. You know, it's shown to me, you know, a hardcore Muslim who doesn't identify herself as a feminist. But it's also at the same time shown to this woman who's a hardcore feminist, you know, and has nothing to do with Islam. It's shown to all of these different kinds of people. And there's something so interesting about that. And that's why I think art is like interpreted in the eyes of the viewer. I, when I see it, I'm, I'm kind of interpreting it in the way that my life is, in the way that I've experienced life, in the way that I am, differing to another person, to another person, to another person. It's just different for each person. You know, and I actually used to be an artist myself um, in just the fine arts and oil painting and all of that. And it's the best feeling when someone looks at your art and just comes up with a different interpretation. There's just something so beautiful about it because it's like you created something that can have different meanings, you know, and it makes people feel different things. And I think that's so beautiful because it just shows how we're all so different and we've experienced different things in life and we can't always all agree on the same thing because that's what life is you're gonna meet people who are so different from you but then you have to progress and you can't just stay where you are and not understand their perspective if you if you at least want to grow want to better understand doesn't mean to be them or to adopt what they understand or, or what they believe but to just understand and grow because it, the, as a functioning society that is what makes it functioning is what makes it i guess able to sustain itself in the long term and well gosh i have so many ideas i don't even know where to start okay the, well this is why i made a notes list so I said that there was going to be spoilers, right? And I said that, okay, I said that I'm not a feminist. I just want to like really put that out there. Uh, okay, so the beginning, okay? The beginning was weird. The beginning was really weird. The beginning was honestly what I would say enforced this idea that I already had, which was it's going to be feminist propaganda, which is when the kids were just bashing their toys, their baby dolls on the ground. They were just destroying all their baby dolls because they didn't want to act like little tiny child mothers anymore, which was funny. But it's it's just already then and there, it's like I thought that was a commentary on motherhood. You know, and I was like, that's not surprising. Let's keep watching. I wasn't disappointed. It was expected. I was expecting that. But it's like I felt like that set the tone for the movie. So when a movie opens like that, you're confused. You're just like, where is this going? But you can already kind of have an idea where this is going. And well, you know, pissing off motherhood in the beginning is not a great start. So we just, we kept going with the movie and I didn't really have high hopes for it. And going into the movie, it started to show this feminist utopia of Barbie, where women control the world. You know, a woman can be whatever she wants to be. And the Kens are just there. The Kens are just there. Now, I don't know if that was like a commentary on how society is, but the exact opposite, where I hate the word, okay? But we're living in a patriarchy. I don't like the word. I don't. Starting out, the movie was not strong. The movie was not starting off strong. Just this feminist utopia. It was such, I felt like this m movie is going to be boring. It was just going to feed me all of this propaganda and I would like choke on all of this propaganda. Like my, my pharynx will give out, you know, but I kept watching. I kept watching and well, it's when Barbie goes to uh, the crazy Barbie and there was this really interesting um, moment in the film where crazy Barbie gives Barbie the choice between the real world or Barbie land. She's like, which one do you want? You know? And then Barbie's like, I'll go with Barbie land, obviously. Crazy Barbie was like, no, you have to pick the real world. You have to pick the struggle. She was like, no, I'm just gonna pick Barbie land. It's just easier. Crazy Barbie was like, you don't actually have a choice. You think you have a choice, but you don't actually have a choice. I think that was commentary on something way bigger than it actually is or was in that moment. Now, 
excuse me, I'm going to use the word commentary a lot because everything is a symbol of something. That That's why I think Greta is ahead is because she's good at putting these things in there. She's good at putting these very, very hidden meanings that that can can work on so many levels and can operate on so many different kinds of people for them to understand it in their own interpretation based on their own lives and experiences. So when I saw that, when I saw Crazy Barbie saying, you don't actually have a choice, I don't, I don't know. I felt like it was interesting because to me, feminism is, well, interesting uh, because what what is feminism let's define it because it's one of those things again that people just will have different d- very very differing opinions on um i see the majority consensus on youtube comments on videos everywhere feminism is the equality between men and women in all aspects so social equality um economic equality political equality all of these different kinds of um, facets in this society they want to have equality in all of these things okay but I I don't agree with that I don't in, in any way shape or form I think that's like completely disregarding the fact that men and women are just different they're if a woman pulled up her shirt and a man pulled up his shirt what do you think would be the different factor what do you think I swear so many people are gonna act dumb to that question Oh, uh, I don't know, it's just like... No, we both know, okay? We both know they're not the same. Like, I'm sorry to be the person to break the ice and give you this very uncomfortable truth. See what I did there? Anyway, they're not the same. That's what I believe, for sure. If you don't want to believe that, by all means, don't believe that. I, again, don't understand the world that we're living in where that would not be believed. But, you know, everyone is entitled to their opinion. But I don't think mine is an opinion. I think it's a fact. Regardless, I digress. I really must digress. It's just, what was I going on about? Wow, I got so passionate all of a sudden. We're going back to this idea of Crazy Barbie offering Barbie this choice. I love how I just go on tangents all the time. So Barbie's presented with these two choices and she thinks she has a choice, but she doesn't actually have a choice. Now, what do I think that is in parallel to? And I actually got this, I think from Michael Knowles. I think he touched on this, I'm not sure. But it just, this idea sprung to my head so quickly, it felt so real. And it just felt like it was parallel to women in the workforce in the 1940s there's this article that i pulled up that's very very interesting that i think everyone should read and it is what america lost as women entered the workforce now mind you i'm not american i don't live in america but most women in america are in the workforce and it's starting to reflect that in asia in europe it's it's starting to become the thing for women to be in the workforce and that's just inevitable and the thing that I think, like the the ch- the choice that Crazy Barbie was offering, what is what it is in parallel to, is women never had a choice, like they were going to end up in the workplace inevitably, you know, and it's the it's the struggle, it's the effort, it's the harder one to pick. That's why Barbie was like, I obviously want Barbie Land, the equivalent of I just want to cuddle a baby and just you know, stay home, like, leave me alone. But then with the government and society just as a whole just pushed women into the workforce, you know? And now we think that women, like, they chose to be there. They chose to be in the workforce. I'm not saying this for all women, but I'm saying this as a trend of all things, as a trend of the general occurrence of this whole thing, the the general um, phenomenon. Because it's, you can base it on your own experiences, but then you have to look at it as a greater picture because this involves all women, not just you as a woman. There's so much parallel between like this world and and the, the world that's portrayed in Barbie. And so Barbie obviously has to take the struggle. Barbie has to go to the real world and well, she ends up in the real world right here, uh, which they depict as so, so bad and so terrible. 
and I'm pulling up my notes right now. What was I talking about? Right, so it's switching from a matriarchy in a female-driven world to the supposed patriarchy. And I can't tell you, no, I can't tell you how many times I heard the word patriarchy in this movie. I don't like the word. It just like, it just, I associate like crazy people with it, respectfully. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the amount of feminists that I, that I saw use the word patriarchy in their screaming announcements and speeches and it's just like, no thanks, you know? <laughs> Just my take. So now there's like this double expectation of women to have a family, but also be in the workforce, you know? And that's not really aligned with my beliefs. That's not really aligned with the way I view the world and like the relationship between men and women in societies. But th I feel like that is the message that it's giving. And Barbie as a whole, what Ruth herself, right? Like the creator of Barbie in Mattel, she said that Barbie, or like along the lines of, she said that Barbie was there to tell girls that they have a choice or they can pick whatever they want or like they have choices in life, right? Because Barbie can be anything. Barbie could be an astronaut. Barbie could be a doctor. Barbie could be whatever she wants to be, you know? But Barbie could be pregnant Barbie, but that was discontinued, which was so weird. I don't, seeing that in the movie just was like, odd to me because as a muslim we value motherhood more than anything for women it's an honor to be a mother it's it's one of the greatest things that a woman can become is raise the next generation because that's one of the hardest tasks any human can ever have if you ask me i mean sure you can go into the workforce sure you can strive to be the best you can get the bonus you can be employee of the month that's great but you have the ability to make tiny little humans does no one realize that I, I had this realization yesterday i don't know why i was sitting alone and i was like i can make babies <laughs> yeah with the awkward silence too i was well it's not like i'm just gonna go make babies but it's it's like my anatomy enables me to just make babies if I wanted to. That's insane. I don't think that should be legal for me to just have the choice to just suddenly make babies if I feel like it. Of course, there's a counterpart to making babies. It's not just by yourself. Well, a bone marrow study. No, I'm kidding. I have no idea. But it's just, that's an insane feature of a woman. Anyway, so yeah, so that's just my, that's my take. Um, on the world is that motherhood is a privilege it's a privilege like I don't think that a woman feels satisfied or content or like at peace with herself in life if she solely bases her life in the workforce you know I feel like if that's for like a man's nature a man's nature of competitiveness and and just like this need to provide it's just built within the man's biology but when you go to a woman, she's more nurturing. She's more kind of caring. And that, I'm not saying that's all she is, but I'm saying those are feminine traits. And you know, there's this interesting thing where men and women can literally learn from each other. And we have these amazing traits and we think, and I think that it's, it would be productive if we saw the best traits in each other and learned not to adopt them fully, but to understand them and use them when necessary. You know, because we all have masculine and feminine energy. And obviously for men, it's more masculine. For women, it's more feminine. That's just my take. That's my view of the world. That's the way I see things. And right now, it's just when you see mainstream media, it's just completely the other way. It's where men and women are the same now. Like, do men have the same hormones as women do? I mean, in the span of a month? In the span of a month, a woman goes through a roller coaster. I'm talking freaking full out roller coaster in Abu Dhabi. You know the full the Ferrari one, the fastest one on earth. That's the roller coaster she goes through every month. You know with progesterone and estrogen levels. I would know because I weight lift and I try to lift accordingly to my hormones, because my energy levels plummet and skyrocket whenever they feel like it. Whereas for men, it's stable. 
It's just the same throughout all of their lives. Going into old age, testosterone starts to go down a little, but we're just so different biologically. There's no arguing in that. It's a fact that we're just so biologically different. So to say that we're just the same and we expect to be the same, live the same and do the same, it feels so wrong. It, it, to me, at least, it feels so wrong. To another person, it might seem okay, but in the long run, if everyone did that, if, if all societies were like that, would there even be the next generation? That's my question. So right now, the world's population is going down. Why do you think that is? Trick question. It's not a trick question. It's obviously just because women are more in the workforce. And so this movie made me feel like it was going to bash motherhood from the beginning. Because I believe that women can be mothers and work at the same time. My mom is exactly like that. My mom raised us and she's... Mashallah, Allah, she's one of the best architects that I know. You know, because she loves her job so much. And you can do the two things, but it starts to become a problem when work starts seeping into motherhood and you can't properly be a mother to your kids. And I, I don't think anyone can be a mother. I don't think any woman can be a mother. Because it's we think that it's just this job where we raise little humans, you know. But it's a job that is 24 7 and all of this expectations are placed on you you know you're supposed to raise good kids and that's not easy and you can see that in the movie hints of that when um i forgot her name the protagonist in the movie you could argue that the protagonist isn't actually barbie but that it's the other character that is named wait for it wait for it gloria love how i had to google that now i wouldn't say she's the protagonist but she was the secondary main character kind of because it's like this woman is a mom and working and she has this um monologue in the movie where she talks about how women are just judged regardless of what they do you know, they're scrutinized for everything that they do. You can't be too skinny, too fat. You can't be uh, too assertive or too caring or, you know, the opposite of assertive. She she has this honestly interesting monologue. Like, I don't fully agree with everything that she says, but it's interesting to see her perspective because being a mom and working at the same time is, is admirable. Like, I don't even know where to come from when I talk about that because... Because I, I've never experienced it and I don't know if I will ever because it's just so challenging and demanding and it, it requires so much and we don't appreciate it, you know. I'm going all over the place with this commentary, but I at one point I mentioned peculiar moments in the movie and it, I was referring to these small micro moments, small micro moments that I think Greta strategically placed. I'm not sure, but I just have a feeling because... I don't think she just can accidentally make a really good theme, you know, accidentally. Like, it all ties in together accidentally. I don't understand how that could be the case. I think this was intentional. She made these moments in the, in the movie where uh, Barbie is talking with the creator of Barbie. She's like this old woman that, you know, is like, like wise. Like, she has this like really superior aura to you and you can sense that she's basically saying i'm better than you without saying i'm better than you but she's talking about what her vision was for barbie because it was so interesting the conversations that barbie and ruth had in the movie and there was this one moment between barbie and an older woman at a train or i think bus station where barbie looked at this old woman and she was like you're beautiful and then the old woman was like, I know, which was so, it was weird. I, to this to this point, I just find it a little weirdly put and weirdly inserted in the movie. I don't know what it was referring to. I read somewhere that it was referring to how Barbie had all of the cellulite in the beginning and she was getting anxious and she just didn't want her skin to look like that. But then she saw this older woman and realized 
like these things of the human body are beautiful you know wrinkles the older woman obviously had wrinkles which you could argue is like the same thing as cellulite right it's just i guess the the problems of the human body you know things that uh, are unfixable and she just said you're beautiful as in like coming to the realization that like cellulite isn't i have no idea bro i i just read that somewhere and i thought that was like that was okay it's like i didn't really care for that but there's this conversation again i keep going back and forth there's a conversation between ruth and barbie and ruth starts to talk about the world in a very in my eyes i felt like an unbiased way it didn't feel feminist to me well then again everything everyone has a different meaning of feminism but i didn't see feminism in the words that she spoke she was talking about how she always had this vision for Barbie. And you know, her inspiration for Barbie stemmed from, you know, what she wanted for her daughter was that she could be anything that she wanted to be. And there was also this very interesting parallel where Ruth is referring to her her relationship to her daughter. And then there's this there's also these characters of of Gloria and her daughter throughout this movie so there's this parallel the entire time of mother-daughter relationship and i only like started to see that at the very very end and i'm talking like just today i'm starting to understand that and it was just this fascinating idea to play with because in the beginning it was i felt it was speaking ill of motherhood but then i see this and i just didn't know how to feel this was exactly in the in part of the movie where I didn't know how to feel. I was confused. I was like, what is this movie trying to get at? What are you trying to do? You know, I felt attacked at some point. But I was I was trying to remain calm and understand what was going on. And I could safely say that I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> really, to this point, I just feel like I'm still a little lost and that's fine. But there was always this mother-daughter relationship in the movie. And it was always speaking at least honorably of mothers in the real world, mothers who work, you know, because I think Ruth herself is a mother who worked. And she said, there's nothing strange about that, you know, and I agree. And it's just seeing that. And at the end, there's like this montage, very emotional, by the way, of I think Ruth herself or, or some woman, you know, being a baby, growing into a little girl and then be having all of these dolls playing with them believing she could be whatever she wanted to be growing up starting to become a woman raising her own family going out into the workforce becoming this woman that has all aspects of life you know and to me it was emotional because i don't know there's just something about the way it was portrayed Maybe it was the sad piano that was playing. I have no idea. I told you that music always messes with your emotions. Go watch my video about life without music. It's very interesting. To this day, I still think about it. Life without music. Because music just always touches your heartstrings. And something about the montage, I just did not know why I felt so connected to it. Because I want to aspire to be a mother. You know, I aspire. I don't want to. I, I already aspire to be a mother, first and foremost, before anything else. But then I also had these strong ambitions that I want to do in tech and all of these other places in life. It's just I have aspirations, you know, but being a mother is otherworldly. It's something else. It's, it's an honor and it's a privilege and it's something that is unlike anything else in a woman's life specifically. And that's something that I got from the movie, and I don't think a lot of people got from the movie, because it just... I said this in the beginning, it felt like a very flat surface level movie. You know, if you don't start to connect these little dots, or you don't c come to the conclusion on your own, or you just don't see it, it's not for everyone. You know, I really... I You can't imagine how much I hated the movie as, as soon as I exited the movie. I just was like uncomfortable with the feeling of not understanding what just happened you know like i didn't know how to feel i didn't know what ideas came to my head but i just did not like that i didn't understand hence i hated it 
and honestly, and this is going to sound so, so weird, but I don't recommend the movie. I don't. It, this is, is going to sound so contradictory. Like, I just talked about how this movie has intricate elements that are connected on a deeper level. But it, like, took some effort to, to reach that conclusion. It took some effort reaching that, like, idea of connecting the dots. You know? And a lot of people aren't going to do that. A lot of people, for them, it's just a movie. It's just a way to spend a Friday night. You know? So, uh, surface level, it's really a dumb movie. It, this is how I felt right after watching. I was like, this can't be it. It just looks so dumb. And had I stayed that way, I would have kept my my conclusion is that it's just a really dumb, badly produced movie. And I thought it was the worst scripted movie on earth. Like the lines sometimes were just so bad. You know, the jokes were just terrible. But it's like, this movie has parts for those who really like deeper meaning. You know, so I genuinely don't recommend this movie for everyone. I don't, for most people. If they ask me about the Barbie movie, I'll be like, yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> not to say that you're not an intellectual, you can't think for yourself, but it's like, to them, it might be a waste of time because it's like they don't, if you're not really passionate about it, it would kind of be a waste of time because why would you make the effort to dive deeper into the deeper meaning of the movie? It, it takes a lot of effort. And... And at the end of the day, you see the movie through your own eyes, through your own lens and perspective and the way that you live your life. You know, and that's how I viewed the movie is because I value motherhood so much because when I look at my mother, it's, I don't know what to say. I don't know what words I have for my own mother because she makes it, she makes it seem and look, and I think it is the most honored job in the world. It's something taken for granted today. It's something that's just, if anything, we look down on motherhood. We look at mothers when they're complaining about their kids, like, can you stop complaining about your kids? But we don't understand. They're literally raising the next generation. I think they have the right to complain just a little bit. You know, it's not an easy task being a mother. And I, that's something I stand so firmly with is because people especially feminists who think that motherhood is like being locked up in your house and taking care of little kids. That's a, f I find that so offensive. I find that completely offensive if, if that's what people think of motherhood. And that's fine, I'm not gonna go and change their view of the world. Again, my views, <laughs> boiling a lot of people's butts, but my views, you don't have to have a kid, ladies. Okay, that's honest, that's actually not what I'm getting at, it isn't. Really, not all women are meant to be mothers. I firmly believe in that. Because, well, I've heard of several mothers that I would argue shouldn't be mothers, but are mothers. <laughs> Interesting. I'm not gonna get into that. That's a very, very heavy debate and very, very heavy discussion. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. I spent way longer talking about this and researching about this than I ever thought. You know, I thought I would watch the Barbie movie and be like, cool. Let's make a video about it. But I spent the entire day just trying to dissect what I wanted to get at and, and ideas of the past that are parallel to this movie at the same time. It really does require someone to have, I guess, at least good fundamentals on the history, which I don't, by the way. I really don't, which is why I did as much research as I did today. Is because I don't, but I don't want to butcher it. It's like, there are a lot of things that I don't know. You know, but I don't mind learning. In fact, I like learning. If anything, it strengthens me, it helps me in arguments. You know, there's nothing wrong with learning things that you don't believe in, as long as you understand what they are, you know. But it doesn't mean that you have to believe in it, but you can learn about it. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I, I know it made a lot of people uncomfortable, hence the title of this podcast. Yes, yes, I made the name for a reason. Anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing day. And, well, I don't know if you should watch Barbie or not. That's really not on me. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.